Today I'm going to talk you through programming the 2018 best-selling entry-level DMR two-way radio which is the Kenwood TKD 340. Here we go. So the first thing we need to do is install the software. Assuming that you've obtained your software from ourselves, of course we are Radiotronics, or a dealer, your dealer, whoever your dealer is, uh, I'm going to show you how to, first of all, uh, install the software and then show you how to program the radio itself. If for whatever reason you can't get the software from your dealer, give us a call, Radiotronics. Right, so plugging over, let's get on with what we need to do. As if by magic, the software appears here because I've just downloaded it from our website. As you can do, if you give us a call and have a chat with us, we'll help you out with that. Right, so you've downloaded it, you've un unpacked the uh, compressed zip file that it comes in, and this is what you're presented with. So all you do is just double click and you click next. Again, click next. And all you do is now very interesting. So um, what you do is it asks you for a username and a organization. They're the same thing. You put whatever you want in there and then it will also ask you for a uh, password. And it's quite simply the password that you are given from either your dealer or if you've bought the software from us or you've obtained the software from us, we'll give you some sort of password for that as well. So let's continue with the installation. Uh, yeah, we do want to make those changes. And then that's all complete. So now if we check the start menu, you will see in the Kenwood FPU folder, there is now this um, program. So all we do is we drag and drop it onto there. And the reason I say that that is so that it's easily accessible later. So as you saw, went to the start menu, clicked, clicked on the Kenwood FPU folder, and then saw the KPG 166D. Now that we've dragged and dropped it to there, so it's easier to find in future, we just simply click it. That's it, and it opens. Right, so back to our radio. Here's the TKD 340. I've actually removed the side cover, which is this thing from there just to make it easy for you guys to see. And then what we're going to do is we're going to plug the programming cable in. And if you're wondering, ah, where do I get a programming cable from? It really is as simple as this. Just contact us. We'll get you, we'll give you a programming cable. Um, I think they're about 20 quid, you know, for, a, for an aftermarket one, or you can buy a genuine one for about 80 pounds if you want. Um, but we have one for about 20, 25 quid, something like that. So give us a call and uh, we'll we'll sort you out with that. Okay, good. So here we go, back to the software. The first thing we do is, of course, we turn the radio on. And you'll notice when you get a brand new radio, it's not programmed and that's uh, shown to you. The radio actually shows you that it's not programmed, if you look. And you'll notice that an amber and red light, it's difficult to see on the camera, but an amber and red light is actually flashing. And that means the radio is not actually programmed. So it's got no channels programmed in it. So I'll leave the picture in picture, which is this thing down here, so you can see the radio while we're programming the radio. So the first thing we need to do is we need to click at, on the start menu and we need to click on to device manager. The way we do that is we quite simply press it on the start menu and type device and then you will see device manager. And the, the reason we're opening this is just to see that the cable we've got plugged in is actually assigned a COM port, and you'll see that ours has been assigned a COM port 4. We'll minimize that so we can quickly access it if we need to. Then we'll click the Setup uh, tab and we'll click on COM port. And as you can see, it's already selected COM port 4. I'm going to leave it the speed as high unless we have an issue, uh, but we probably won't, so I'll click OK. And then what we'll do is you will see the Program tab here, and we simply click read data from transceiver and then it will say uh, a dialog box will pop up and we just click read simple as that just 
taking a drink of water there. So here we go. Reading is now complete. You'll see that the, the radio is pretty much empty as it's a brand new radio. And as you can see, that, that orange and uh, red light is still kind of flashing. So the first thing we want to do is add a very simple uh, analog channel. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, now, you can type the channel frequency directly into this field here. So let's do that, 449.3125. That is a standard Ofcom simple UK channel. And then we change this to say analog, and then we might as well just pick uh, this uh, CTCSS 67.0. And that is it. If you were looking uh, for a tutorial to show you how to program analog channels into a TKD340, that's it. We've come to the end of the tutorial, except for one thing. You just need to make sure that this, this is Fleet Sync is selected, not Five Tone. But other than that, we've come to the end of the tutorial. Let's program that one in. Let's click and that was the right button, by the way. Let's just do that again. So, yep, we click there. And we click right. And that's now writing that one channel to the radio. So, if all you wanted to do in this tutorial today was programming a single channel into a radio that you might have bought from us, perhaps you've done it. That's it, that's the end of the tutorial. However, I must stress, <laughs> this is a DMR digital radio. If you want to use it to its full extent, keep watching, because now we're gonna program in some digital channels. And they're really, the, the performance, the sound quality, the, Everything about this radio is designed to be a DMR digital radio. So whilst we have an analog, a single analog channel there with standard CTCSS and what have you, let's do a proper job, shall we? So let's plug it back in. Okay, good. First things first is let's just turn the radio off while we're not using it. But we don't need to forget later to turn it back on. But here we go. We'll leave the analog channel there at, uh, at channel uh, one. And actually, we'll leave a bit of a gap and we'll go to channel three. And what we'll do is we'll create a, a digital channel. So we'll go 449 point, oh, let's try that again. 449.400 tab. Now you'll see uh, that it's copied that into the next field and then it's also DMR channel type. But let's, let's click into this channel and then let's click the channel edit function. Good, so here we go. Now, the first thing we want to look for is a uh, color code. Now, you have to select a color code for a DMR channel. It can be anywhere between zero and 15. So that's 16 color codes, as you can see. Let's just leave that at one. The next thing we need to consider is a group ID. Now that's denoted by simply selecting where it says cell call on PTT, it, we simply select group call. And we leave the ID list number as one. By the way, that's not DMR group number one. That's just ID one in the list of group IDs. So let's leave that where it is for the time being. At the moment, this works. Now, we go to edit and click DMR. And then if we just maximize this so you can see the full screen, we'll just go to group ID list. So earlier, where we saw ID list number one, actually, that is this thing here. So the ID list number one indicates that number one, not this number one. So imagine that actually we want our group ID to be 100. Well, it will be, that's fine. It's just that in our channel, we're selecting 
ID list number one, which references that there, and that means that we are using group ID 100. Okay, so let's just check that everything is right. So we'll start here at general. Call alert inhibit, group calls only, that's fine. We'll leave that where it is because we don't want to stop the radio from transmitting or, or we don't want to stop the radio from, uh, we don't want to make the radio inhibit anything at all. Uh, alert tone restriction on second call. What happens on these radios is when you press the push to talk, it has a little tone that indicates that it's actually um, transmitting and it sends it sends that, that tone to the receiving radio as well. Well, that's quite annoying if you do that on every call, on every time you press the push to talk button, the push to talk button being this this button here where, the, uh, where you press to talk. Um, so we're going to tick that because we don't want it to keep doing that every single time we press the push to talk. Okay, good. Next one. Um, we'll leave all those as they are. That's fine. Now, here's the thing that we need to look at. With DMR radios, every DMR radio has to have its own unique ID. We can leave this at number one because actually we only have one radio here. But if we had two radios, it's important that radio one would be set to number one, ID one, and radio two would be set to ID two. But I'm going to show you a smarter way of doing that when we actually write the radio. Then we'll look at this again. Uh, this is conventional uh, options number two. Uh, we don't need to change any of this. This is fine. Um, again, this is all about alert tones and colors. That's quite... Uh, LED alert tone color is quite clever because we can actually change the LED that's shown here. Hang on, let me just show you that. So this LED here can be many different colors so that can actually, this denotes what colors you'll use for a particular feature. And so actually we could say, well, when we're having a group call, we want that to be blue. And when we're having a individual call, we want that LED to be orange. And so that just shows you uh, what, uh, the, it, it just makes it visually, you can see on the LED whether it's an individual call or a group call. Um, how useful that is, I'm not really sure, but. Um, it's a feature nevertheless. You can also create in here, you can create uh, individual unit IDs so that you can make individual calls to radios um, from, from here. So you see where it says group call, you can uh, actually make individual calls if you want per channel. But we'll visit that in a later video. This is just for very basic programming. And it might seem like we're, this is quite convoluted, but actually this is uh, very basic DMR programming. So you'll see that we'll just click the close button there. It takes us back to here. And we will just click the close button there as well. And you'll see that on channel one, we have an analog channel of 449.3125. And on channel three, we have a digital channel with a frequency 449.400. Again, it's very important that Fleet Sync is always selected here because if you select five tone, it will actually disable the CTCSS on the analog channel. Right, so let's just turn the radio back on very quickly just to show you. There we go. And then if we click program and click right, data to the transceiver which is the same as clicking this button here i'm going to show you something quite clever about that dmr id i showed you earlier so if we click consecutive right um untick the fleet sync because we're not using that function and you'll see that we've got dmr conventional with increment ticked so the reason why that is ticked is because as i said earlier Every DMR radio should have its own individual ID. So let's assume that the, the, the ID of this particular radio that we've got here is one. Let's write that. You'll see it's right in. Yeah. 
And now when I press OK, watch what happens. The ID turns to 2. That means that the next unit I write, so let's just imagine for a second that I unplug this radio, I put it to one side, I go and get another radio, I plug that one in, and then we click write. And it then writes that one as DMR ID number 2. And so on and so forth. And that will keep happening, you know, as many radios as we write. So that works very well for that. So now you'll see if I just bring up the main camera there you can have a quick look you'll see that we're now on channel one if we go back to the software if you remember we had two channels uh one oh, let's close that two channels one at channel one and one at channel position three so if we go back to the camera you'll see um that we've got one channel program channel one but if we actually oops if we try and flick to channel two it'll make a noise really but then not at channel three because channel three it's it knows is is a valid programmed channel so channel three channel two makes that funny noise and then channel one is the analog channel so channel two ch sorry channel one is the analog channel channel two is disabled as you can hear this is it's not enabled yep and then channel three is the DMR channel that we program. So that is pretty much it. Uh, if you've got any comments or anything that you'd like to add, yes, I will do a more comprehensive video at a later date. This one was designed only to get you going with your TKD340 if you bought one. So that gives you an idea of how to create an analog channel which is very basic and simple. Just make sure that Fleet Sync is selected and not Five Tone. And uh, how to create a very basic DMR uh, channel, which we've demonstrated there. So if you've got any comments, feel free to add them into the comments box. We'd love to hear from you. If you didn't like the video, thumbs down. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. And don't forget that um we post new videos all the time so please subscribe to our channel hit the bell icon to be notified when we post a new video or we go live on a live stream and if you've got anything to tell us anything to contribute whatsoever please leave a comment in the video description